two. Ephesians chapter two. I'm, uh, I can't complain too much about being on the road a whole lot. Not compared to the folks who traveled from Ohio, but uh, it still is a long, long trip to and from Fort Myers. So, you know, I didn't get as much rest as what I normally get. But I do have some thoughts here from this text that I hope will be a blessing as we consider what the scripture says here. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I'm in chapter 1. Let me get back across the page here. See, I told you I'm tired. Don't try to take the wrong exit. <clears throat> Thankfully, I was in Ephesians, just the wrong street there. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1, it says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Here in this text, we begin to learn something about how rough we've really got it in and of ourselves. How bad we really are. And the hopelessness we see in and of ourselves. The doctrine is the total depravity and inability of man. You see, a lot of times we talk about the total depravity of man, but let us not forget about the inability of man. It should be understood because dead is dead. Yesterday, as I was at the funeral for Brother Pyle, They had the visitation first and then the and then the funeral. It's usually the way things go. We we were running a little bit late because Josiah had started not feeling real well. So we we, we went and we we came and and um, anyway, circumstances the way that they were, we thought, well maybe we could just go in and slide into a back row. But when we got there, all the back rows were filled up. And so the funeral ushers said, hey, how many have you got? And we said, we've got four. And by this time, they'd already started the funeral. So they pulled us all the way to the front. It was good because you could hear everything, but, you know, the casket was there and open and everything. And Brother Pyle's body was there. And 
And then as we left from the funeral home and made our journey out to the cemetery, and the cemetery was right out back of the funeral home, we walked across and out into the cemetery and there were a number of graves. Some of those graves were new. Some of them were decades old. And the thought occurred to me that there's nobody in any of these situations who are less dead than the others. Brother Pyle had just died at the end of April. He wasn't less dead than the, than the person whose grave said that they'd been dead for several decades. You see what I'm saying? There's not degrees of deadness physically. Dead is dead. Whether a person has been dead for minutes or dead for decades or dead for centuries, Physically speaking, they're dead. They're dead. Their body is dead. And so it is spiritually. We cannot look at somebody and consider their spiritual being. So, well, this person isn't so dead as that person. This person is out doing this and this and this, but he's not as bad off as that person because he's not doing those things. Spiritually, without Christ, if you've not, if, if you've not been saved, you're dead. In your sins and your trespasses. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> and whether a person has been maybe a child grown adult, elderly. Without the Lord, nobody is any better off than the other. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Without the Lord, we're all in the same condition. Dead. Just like in that graveyard. Just like in that graveyard. And just like in that graveyard, there are things that can't happen spiritually. Physically, there are things that can't happen. The fellow in the grave can't holler out at the person in the casket and say, well, you're lucky because you ain't as dead as I am. That's not how that works, is it? The person in the casket can't holler and say, how does it feel being down in the grave? That, that doesn't, that's not how it works. The body that's dead can't do anything except and check this out. Except God intervenes. And we see some of that that happens in the, in the Scriptures. And I love to read about when Jesus intervened. 
folks were brought back to life who had been dead. I love those. I love those. I love those from the New Testament. I even love going back to the Old Testament when Ezekiel preached the Valley of Dry Bones. I love those things. Because you know what? There's spiritual application to all of that. Because spiritually, there's some things we can't do either in and of ourselves until God gets hold of us. Some several years ago, Brother Curtis Pugh, some of y'all remember him. He used to be missionary up in Yukon Territory of Canada. Then he went over to Romania for a while and then he ended up in the latter years of his life coming back to the United States. And I remember I remember he, he wrote a tract 13 things a lost person cannot do. Back in those days I was a teenager and I didn't have very many books. Internet wasn't much of a thing and so, uh, so I'd go to churches and I, I'd, I'd grab everything I could out of the track rack, read it, study it. I'm sure he got accused of being hard shell, but listen, he he was telling the truth. There are some things that a, that a dead man can't do. Some things that a lost man cannot do. As I was studying this and thinking about where to go, I, I thought about that old tract. All he did was write, all he did with that tract, pretty much, was he wrote down the points and put down the Bible verses. That's all he did. At each point, he didn't even put any commentary on it. He just put the Bible verses. And you know there's people who will argue that stuff. Maybe it's because I was being sentimental thinking about some old preachers or whatever, but I, wrote, I, I, I copied down some of those thoughts this morning. We won't look at them all, but you know, he was right. He was right. Those old, those old things that Brother, Brother Pew preached, Brother Pyle preached, Brother Hobbs preached, Brother Moore preached, Brother Wilson preached, those things still ought to be preached. They still ought to be looked at. They still ought to be considered and remembered. What can't a dead man do spiritually? Well, he can't think like God does. In Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens, <coughs> excuse me, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God says, hey, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And don't we know it? Those of us who are saved, even to this very day, we still battle with that flesh, don't we? And we know and understand that the ways of man, the thoughts of man, we can't think the way that God does. His ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts than our thoughts. We can't get there. We can't get there. We may as well try again to build a tower to reach to heaven. And we know how that ended up. It failed, didn't it? Then to try with our own intellect, 
our own wings to reach to the thoughts of God. We can't get there. We can't get there. In and of ourselves, we can't. A lost man cannot understand God. In and of ourselves, oh, we cannot understand God. Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. Verses 7 and 8. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do deeper than hell? What canst thou know? You can't by searching or by reasoning figure out God. Philosophers have tried, haven't they? Wise men, so-called experts. I used to get a kick out of, I don't know which I got a bigger kick out of, watching the so-called experts on TV try to explain the miracles of the Bible. Or watching my grandfather watch the experts on TV try to explain the miracles of the Bible. I don't know which I used to get a bigger kick out of. So they'd be on there and they'd, they'd be talking about like the, the Red Sea and how that, that, that was parted and, 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 and how that, that couldn't have been. And then they'd get on there and they, and, they would, and they would talk about it. And they would say, well, the, the Jews must have crossed in ankle deep water. And they'd go through with their big explanations. And Grandpa would just watch that. And he'd calmly sit there. And, and he'd look over at me and he'd say, You know, David, that's, that's a pretty big explanation. But he'd say, I guess, I guess they didn't think about that the Egyptians must have drowned in ankle deep water. If that's the explanation of it all. <laughs> get into the book of Genesis watch people how they try to reason things out how they try to squish the evolutionary story in there and it's almost like God knew as he did that people would try to do that what did he do he gave us light before he gave it the sun. Pretty amazing stuff. Evolution can't explain that. Human reasoning can't explain that. Oh my my. So many things, so many things that the the, the, the spiritually dead man cannot do. He cannot see spiritual things. In John 3, John 3 and verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In and of himself, he cannot see or understand the spiritual <coughs> thing. If you go on down there, verse 13. Sorry, for, sorry, uh, Verse 5, he says, 
Well, verse 4, he says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Over in John 1 and verse 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You see, the lost man, the spiritually dead man, cannot birth himself into the family of God. And God uses these, the, 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 these phrases, these things that any culture should be able to understand. But folks have a trouble with it, don't they? The flesh rises up and says, oh, I should be able to do this. But tell me, what part did you have in your physical birth? It's Mother's Day today. Did your child get with you and your husband and make an agreement with you so that he could say, so that your child could say, hey, this is the day that I'm going to be born. Today is the day. Did your child choose you? Did he choose the place, the doctors, the time, the circumstance? Mother's Day, does the child go to the mother and say, boy, I'm glad that I did all that hard work the day I was born? Not at all. It's not how that works, is it? <clears throat> so it is with the spiritual birth. You see. You see. We are dead in our sins and our trespasses. There are some things that we are unable to do. In John chapter 6, John chapter 6, verses 44 and 45, we're not going to go through all 13 things that Brother Pew wrote in that track this morning, but I just want to give you an idea. <clears throat> John 6, 44 and 45, he says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall be all taught of God, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Verse 65 says this. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come to me except it be given unto him of my Father. When we think of being dead, our sins and our trespasses, there's nothing it can be done. Left to ourselves, we are hopeless. Just like those who are in the graveyard. Just like Ezekiel when he was out there in the valley of dry bones and the question is asked, Son of man, can these bones live? And the answer was, Lord, thou knowest.
you see. In and of ourselves, we cannot come to Christ. We cannot believe on Christ. We cannot walk down the aisle. We cannot, we cannot confess with lips. We cannot repent. We cannot please the Lord. But look again at our text. There in Ephesians chapter 2. I love this. I love this. <clears throat> While it's true that we are that we were dead in our trespasses and our sins, then we must not, we must not forget this horrible condition. Let us notice the first part of this. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You hath he quickened. You know what that means? That means he made us alive. He made us alive. It's going down to verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ. Every one of us has a different story to tell. Meaning that we may have been like the one in the cemetery been dead for decades. Some of us may have been like the one in the casket, been dead for a few weeks. But all of us have that same story that God stepped in. You see, what I'm saying is some of us, we were lost, we were, we were dead in our sins and trespasses for a long, long time. We were saved at an older age. Others of us were saved at a younger age. We weren't dead quite so long, but still we were all dead. We were all undone. We were all without hope in this world. We needed the Lord. We needed the Lord. <coughs> and if you skip on down, Verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're saved by grace. Through faith. And that's not even of ourselves. There's no work. What in the world could we possibly do? Can you imagine in the graveyard, if we take just one example, Lazarus. When Jesus called him forth, Lazarus come forth. Lazarus come forth. If he were to come out of there bragging about what he had done, everybody in that place would have said, what, are you crazy, man? Do you understand where you've been? What just happened? But he knew. And everybody around him knew. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Regardless of where you're at today, what you've done, where you've been, your hope is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. You see, Jesus is the answer to the problem of mankind. <clears throat> God's the hero. End of story. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5.
Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. <clears throat> We have nothing to brag about. We have nothing. Philippians 3 and 3, we won't go there, but Paul said we have no confidence in the flesh, but rather we rejoice in Christ. That's who gets the glory. Wherever we've come from, whatever we've done, whoever we think we are, we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. But God, praise the Lord, but God. And in our story of our life, when it's all said and done, when the final chapter is closed, may it be that we were dead in our sins and trespasses, but we were made alive through God. May, may it be that we were that, that the story is told of how that though we were dead, yet we live through Christ. May God get the glory. And if we think that we'll get to heaven any other way, may we throw that all aside. Because there's no way to heaven except through Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. May we rejoice in him, though we were dead, yet we live. Thank you for your attention to the word of God this morning.